no emissions whatsoever. A plug-in hybrid car without any CO2 emissions. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it's not. That Opel Vivaro behind me does just that. How does that work? We'll find out right now. And with that, welcome to the Ref Check. Today, we're testing the Opel Vivaro. It's classified as a light commercial vehicle and is mainly used for the transportation of goods or as a service vehicle for engineers and technicians. Of course, what you probably want to know first is how does all of that work? And the answer to that question is already in the name of the car, the Opel Vivaro e-Hydrogen. So it's driven by hydrogen. The fuel cell stack will take the hydrogen from the tanks and the air from outside, put them together through a reaction, generate electricity. The only byproduct of that reaction is water vapor. And that's it. No emissions whatsoever. The Vivaro E hydrogen is based on the regular Vivaro E, so the battery electric vehicle. What they did is they changed a few things. The electric engine is the same, but they took out the big battery at the bottom, replaced it by the hydrogen tanks. They added a fuel cell stack and a lot of other things. But to go into a little bit more detail, we're gonna to talk to an expert about that. It is a fuel cell electric light commercial vehicle and as its name says it runs on hydrogen. The hydrogen is stored underneath the vehicle in a hydrogen tank system stored at 700 bars. It can be refueled within three minutes and the hydrogen is used by the fuel cell which is located under the hood uh, which converts hydrogen and oxygen from air to water vapor and electricity. So it runs the electric motor that is right underneath the fuel cell and uh, the only exhaust is pure water vapor. So it's a real zero emission vehicle. So, but furthermore, it does not only have that fuel cell, but also a battery? Yes, uh, what we have developed here is the so-called mid-power system and it offers the opportunity that uh, we have the full cargo space of the vehicle available. And the system runs in addition with a battery, which means that we can have a relatively smaller fuel cell as compared to a so-called full power system. So we have a mid-power system, which is assisted by the battery. And this enables the system to run at optimal operating conditions relative to the fuel cell. And also, in addition, it offers the opportunity to externally recharge the battery. So you can recharge the vehicle, the battery at the electric grid. So you have the hydrogen as well as the battery power. Yeah, so it will work in everyday conditions. Talking about everyday conditions, this is a delivery car. How are the plans, for example, to bring this into cars for people's transportation? Today, if you consider uh, the cost situation and uh, the application of this technology, it makes most sense to start with a hydrogen light commercial vehicle, which is what we do, because we have a lot of customers, fleet customers, that have their employees that go home uh, in the evening, that park their car on the street, so they do not have any opportunity to recharge electrically. So they like to rely on the hydrogen refueling station network that we have. In Germany, we have about 100 stations nationwide, all operated by H2 Mobility. So they'd like to use this opportunity to refuel the vehicle within three minutes like we are used to with diesel or gasoline vehicles. Back to our test drive. There are different types of hybrid options that you can have with a fuel cell vehicle with the battery inside. For example, the so-called range extender where the fuel cell stack will be very small and just providing let's say five kilowatts of power so it will not be able to power the car on its own and you will rely on the battery to get the car driving. The other extreme is where the fuel cell is huge so for example 100 kilowatts and the battery is very very small so that means if you run out of hydrogen you will not be able to drive.
So what Opel did is they chose the medium way. We have the 45 kilowatt fuel cell stack and we have the 10 and a half kilowatt hour battery. Both of these can drive the car on their own and that is the advantage. So let's say you don't have any hydrogen left, then you can still drive with the battery. Since there are way more charging stations than hydrogen stations, you'll always find one to recharge the battery enough to get to the next hydrogen source. The Vivaro e-Hydrogen is available in two different lengths. 4 meters and 95, that is the regular version, and this is the longer version, 5 meters and 30 for additional cargo space. The Hydrogen Vivaro boasts a capacity of 6.1 cubic meters. One thing is clear, this Opel Vivaro is not made for people transportation. But you can fit up to 1000 kilograms inside and you can also tow an additional 1000 kilograms. Just like a battery electric vehicle, the Vivaro e-Hydrogen comes with a B driving mode for higher recuperation which will charge the battery. What I first thought when I heard I could test the Opel Vivaro e-Hydrogen is that sounds like some pre-series technology. And guess what? It's not. This is already series production standard and Opel will produce around a thousand cars a year. That is the plan for the next years and then in years to come, they will amp up the production up to 10,000 vehicles per year and even more than that in the halfway distant future. Of course, all of that depends on the willingness of fleet customers and other entrepreneurs to lease such vehicles. Production of the Hydrogen Vivaro takes place in Rüsselsheim, not far from Frankfurt and close to Opel's headquarters. In the end, my final verdict on the new Opel Vivaro e-Hydrogen, I really like the idea of that car. So you have the advantages of the fuel cell and the advantages of the battery electric vehicle without the disadvantages of both of these. What is of course clear, a technology like that is not exactly cheap. So companies looking to put a car like this in their fleet will have to pay around 700 euros a month of leasing. And that is the only way you can get a car like this right now, leasing. 700 euros a month is definitely not a bargain, but you will definitely support the environment with that car. And who knows, maybe in the distant future, Combustion engine cars will not be allowed in the cities anymore, and then you will have a car like this. To sum up, the idea of a zero emission hybrid vehicle is very appealing, and the Vivaro e hydrogen doesn't seem to have any technological flaws. Unfortunately, the technology is still rather expensive, which is why we'll have to wait a little longer before it makes it into passenger cars.